Good evening, everybody. So um, this is the first year that my, my DC has ever done a photo contest, 2021. Uh, this was kind of my brainchild. We we have an enormous membership now, almost uh, we're approaching 1,000 uh, members, and we're always looking for new ways to keep our membership engaged. Um, I think it was a good first step. Uh, the uh, We only had about 20 people who submitted photos, but uh, we're going to do this again in 2022, and hopefully this is, uh, this is a photo contest will become a an annual tradition. We can we can continue to build on this. Um, this opening title page, I threw this together just to get everybody kind of in the mood. Uh, these are photos that I took over the previous year that are not my um, that are not my entries for the contest. But I just thought I'd uh, I'd uh, get everybody prepped up to start thinking about mushrooms. So uh, I'll give a quick word on what you're looking at. In the upper left-hand corner, this is a uh, this is an honorary mushroom. This is a slime mold. Uh, this is Serrati Serratio mixed uh, fruticolos. This is um, this is a slime mold that you pretty frequently encounter uh, in our area. Slime molds had, were were taken out taxonomically. From Kingdom Fungi some time ago, but really it's mycologists who show the most amount of interest in them. And whenever I say mycologist, I think I'm saying amateur mycologists as well, because the lecture that Dr. Steven Stevenson did for us a few months ago that's on our YouTube channel is our most popular video. So uh, so slime molds are appreciated by, uh, by uh, all flavor of mycologists. In the center, this is a mushroom that has a common name of bell-shaped fuzzy foot, Zerumphalina kaufmannii. And this is normally how you see this. You'll see a, a mass of uh, even up to several hundred fruiting bodies, uh, usually on the side of a downed log with, with moss covering it. In the upper right-hand corner, you see uh, this is the American Caesar mushroom, the uh, Amanita jacksonii, and uh, it's called the Caesar mushroom because reportedly uh, Julius Caesar uh, really liked to dine on this mushroom. And then right below it, that's a mushroom that needs no introduction. I think everybody knows the chicken mushroom, the sulfur, sh sulfur shelf mushroom whenever they see it. Uh, we have a nice, nice flush of chicken mushrooms on that dead oak tree. And then in the lower left, this is a mushroom I'm really fond of. This is, um, is uh, Multiclavula mucida. This is a, uh, when you look in your field guides, a lot of times you'll see this mushroom. Uh, they'll say the word lichen with it, but this is not a lichen. Lichens are types of mushrooms that have a, um, the fungal body, the thallus, will have a layer of algae growing within it. And the mushroom it allows the algae to grow within its, within its fungal body so it can slowly consume it. It's really a form of agriculture. In this case, the, uh, the mushroom is growing in the wood, but only on wood that has algae growing on the surface of it. This algae is growing uh, free form uh, on the surface of it. It's unconstrained. So it's an obligatory relationship. The fungus is still eating the algae, but the algae is not contained within the fungal mass. And then right above it, we have a pretty classic photo of a stinkhorn. This is Phallus rabinellii, and uh, stinkhorns have a different spore dispersal mechanism than most other fungi. Most fungi disperse their spores through, um, through the wind. The stinkhorns like to attract um, primarily insects to, um, to their spore-bearing mass. That's, the, uh, that's this gray cap. 
it's called a gleba. That's the business end of a of a stink horn. It's absolutely loaded with with fungal spores. And if this if this photo was a little bit larger, you could see there are literally hundreds of black gnats flying around this, uh, highly attracted to to that stink horn. So. Um, I tried to standardize the photos as much as possible. Um, some, some of the people who submitted photos uh, uh, did give me common names. Some people gave me scientific names. Some people gave me no name. Um, so uh, whenever the, the person submitting the photo gave me a name to use, I tried to use it. Uh, but a lot of times I tried to do the for a lot of these, I had to do the ID myself, and I have a much greater appreciation of Mitch Fournay and what he goes through with the uh, with the mushroom table every month to, to ID, uh, do I on online ID. So uh, this very first one is a lovely close-up photo of a honey mushroom, Armillaria. Uh, for most of these pictures, I'm I'm just going to... I'm just going to pause at them and not say anything. This is the golden spindle uh, coral mushroom. I will say, any of you shutter bugs out there who would like to take pictures of mushrooms, anytime you see a mushroom popping up through the uh, moss, that's an opportunity for a really nice photo. I'm always glad to see, I, I like lichens a lot. So I'm always glad to see anybody who bothers to take a picture of a, a lichen. I think we all know what this one is, the uh, the lion's mane mushroom. This is the mushroom that reportedly makes you smarter. Mm. This is uh, the bleeding mycena, a.k.a. the uh, bleeding fairy bonnet. Mm. This is a wonderful photograph, a collage. You can, uh, Flibia incarnata, incarnata means um, flesh. And you can see that pink flesh tones on the surface of the Flibia. Underneath you have this uh, amazing network. It's not exactly gills, not exactly pores or teeth. It's very unique to, or very, very striking for the Flebia. Also, you can see on the side of this branch the uh, Sterium species. I don't know if it's ever been scientifically proven, but everybody takes it for granted that the Flebia mushroom is is uh, parasitizing the uh, the Sterium species. So uh, Annie Weissman is our newest club identifier, and you're going to see in the next five, see, next five slides for very good reason. Um, four out of five of her submissions I'd never seen before. So this is the first one. When I first looked at this, I thought this was a old man of the woods, and uh, but actually it's an Amanita, Amanita onusta. This is from the group of Amanitas, the Lepidella group. Uh, which also contains things like Amanita cocori and Amanita dossipes. This is another very striking belief. Just love this. The um, the common. Name for this belief is the red speckery handsome, all those red dots on it. 
Here's a lovely picture of uh, the lichen Punctelia rudecta. No, it's not a picture of that. It's a picture of what I thought when I first looked at it was probably a honey mushroom. I noticed these, it has the cespitose growth habit. And um, with the between the clusters and uh, that kind of light brown color, I, I thought I was looking at a uh, armillaria. But whenever you look up here, you see that the gills and the spores are dark colored. This is actually a foliota, but it's a little bit different than the foliotas that I'm familiar with. Things like um, foliota squarosa and squarosoides and uh, Luca foliota decorosa and ori uh, foliota oriella. All of those foliotas have scales on the cap, but this one's uh, completely smooth. And apparently this is a mushroom that's pretty widespread and common. So next fall, whenever it's out, we need to keep this in mind. I wasn't sure what this is. It appears like it's emerging from an uh, egg with remnants of the universal veil on it. Um, so I'm calling it an Amanita. But what really caught my eye is, look at this happy little slug going across the top of it. And again, remember what I said about mushrooms emerging from moss. And this is another species that part of the great bicolor debate on whether or not it's a bicolor. I, uh, I love photos a lot too, where you have a little bit of composition. You have this granitic tombstone in the background, the Amanita flaviconia in the foreground, a decomposing mushroom, and then, um, but what caught my eye first was this fuzzy mold. I, it appears to be Cisgaitis megalocarpus. Uh, this is the mold that ate everything. About two years ago, uh, Dr. William Davis gave us a really cool short presentation on this stuff. And there's a bicolored bleep. This is known as the bitter hedgehog. And I assure you, it lives up to its name. It's bitter. It has teeth underneath it. I think we often forget um, how aesthetically pleasing the turkey tail mushrooms are. It, it's because they're so ubiquitous, but they really are a striking mushroom. Look at those lovely uh, concentric zones of coloration on that. Here's a nice photo of uh, Amanita flaviconia. That I, I believe Amanita flaviconia has to be the most commonly encountered uh, Amanita, at least in our neck of the woods. And it lives up to its common name in this photograph too. Its common name is Yellow Patches. I am admittedly a sucker for all mushrooms that are either colored blue or purple. So this is a photo that I enjoy a lot. This is a wonderful photo of a witch's hat mushroom. Just be patient, it'll be morel season soon. Mm. Okay, see, these are my five entries for the photo contest. Uh, you see this line of shaggy manes. I thought the title for this, a good title for this photo would be Shaggy Mane Lane. Um, the the fungi that you see in the foreground covering this tree, this is actually a lichen. This is called a lungwort lichen. And it is completely nondescript and, and, and boring whenever it's desiccated. But after following a precipitation event, it really comes to life. 
Um, it you won't find this like in where we are. I took this picture whenever I was in Maine uh, a few months ago studying lichens. Uh, a little bit of context for this. These are um, two sandstone wheels. They used to use these for sharp sharpening tools uh, ages and ages ago. I have them propped up against an old oak tree in the back of my yard. And as you can see, they've been there for decades because they're covered with crustose lichens. A lovely photo of a pink oyster mushroom by Robert Spake. And a nice photo submission by uh, our outgoing membership chair, Rick Silver. I think this Leophorus genus is is hands down the slimiest genus of mushrooms uh, out there. As I said before, I'm a sucker for blue or purple mushrooms, and I don't think you can do any more purple than this uh, lovely Cortinarius violaceus. Thanks for that, Kelly, Kelly Solansky. Another wonderful photo of uh, the Butterfoot Elite. Uh, nice submission, close-up photo of uh, the gem-studded puffball by Tiffany McCoy, uh, apparently of no relation, to, uh, of no relation. Mm. Okay, so uh, this is a really neat photo submitted by Jerome, um, Jerome King. Um, Lycogala epidendrum is a, another slime mold, very common slime mold, and its common name is wolf's milk slime mold. And I don't think there's ever been a photo of wolf's milk slime mold that so completely captured the essence of its common name. Um, this wonderful mushroom is was com is completely new to me. Uh, believe it or not, this mushroom is a dull little brown Paziza ascomycete cup fungi. Um, yet it has a anamorph growth uh, habit. Uh, so whenever it needs to reproduce asexually, you get this. You get this striking growth habit, and it's just just fantastic. I mean, how many different shades of cerulean blue do you have in this fungal body? It's wonderful. And I thought this was a very good one to end on. <laughs> Mushroom love. Okay.